Friends, welcome again to another devotional in the Psalms. And I hope you're enjoying these Psalms. I hope that they're blessing you and encouraging you. I, I love the Psalms because there's, there's, the whole of life is contained within the Psalms. And, 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 and every situation that we face almost is, is found there, expressed in these Psalms for us. So today, Psalm 24, uh, the King of Glory. From a shepherd in Psalm 23 to a king in Psalm 24, a glorious king, the king of glory. And the issue for David here in this psalm is, well, who could approach such a king, such a, a glorious king? Who could approach such a holy God? We can't surely do it on our own. We can't do it in our own strength or, or in our own holiness. None of us can. But listen, Psalm 24, the king of glory. And I'm reading from the New International Version. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. For he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? The one who has clean hands and a pure heart, who does not trust in an idol or swear by a false god. They will receive blessing from the Lord and vindication from God their Saviour. Such is the generation of those who seek him, who seek your face, God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, you gates. Be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, you gates, lift them up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is he, this King of glory? The Lord Almighty, he is the King of glory. We get this wonderful picture of this glorious, marvellous, almighty God in this Psalm, the one who created everything and established it all and maintains it all. But can we approach him? Can we draw near to him? You know, it saddens me that even many Christians fear that they can't really approach God in his holiness. That they can't even approach God with the level of intimacy that we see David had. Just read Psalm 23 again. Well, the problem, of course, we find the problem in, in verse 3 and verse 4 here. And the problem is being able to stand before God in his holy place. The problem is our hands, clean hands, he says, a pure heart. That's what we need if we're going to stand before God. Clean hands and a pure heart. And so often we worry that actually that's not me. That's not my experience. My, my hands are not not really clean and, and my heart my heart is not as pure as I would wish it to be and as I expect God would expect it or desire it or demand it to be listen in John 15 and verse 3 Jesus says these words you are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you just just take that to heart for a moment you are already clean these are not my words, these are Jesus' words. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. You see, Jesus speaks over our lives. In fact, the whole of his life, death and resurrection is his word over our lives. His life, because he came for us. His death, because he surrendered and submitted to death on our behalf for our sin. And his resurrection... Because he came to bring us life. These are the words of Jesus over our lives. And he says, you're clean because of the word I've spoken to you. It is nothing to do with, with whether we do better. It's nothing to do with, with how well we are doing. It is everything to do with what he has already done and spoken over our lives. Clean hands, a pure heart. See, this is... This is why and this is how we can approach this glorious king. Why? Because this glorious king has done all this for us. 
He has provided all of this glorious, wonderful salvation, forgiveness, life, hope, future. He's provided it all for us through Jesus. That's why we want to approach him, surely. We want to come near to this God who's done so much for us. And this is how we come to him, through Jesus. Jesus says you're clean. Jesus says you're worthy. So how can we approach? How can we go after him? He says you can because of Jesus, because of his blood, because of his forgiveness, because of his life, his death, his resurrection, and the fact that now he's in heaven glorified and interceding for you, praying for you, that you and I would get this truth that we have been made clean by Jesus. Who may ascend the hill of the Lord, who may stand in his holy place, the one who has clean hands and a pure heart, whose hands have been washed clean by Jesus, whose heart has been purified and got rid of the sin because of the blood of Jesus. All that Jesus has done for you. Be a seeking person. Seek after being in the presence of God. Seek after more of the Lord Jesus who's made it all possible. See, the secret to knowing that we have free access to God, free access to the King of Glory, is knowing what Jesus has done for you, what he's done for me. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your death and your resurrection. But we thank you for your life. We thank you that you're ascended today. And that all of this activity of yours, all that you did, was so that we might be clean. So that we can approach God, the King of glory, your Father, and call him our Father. Abba, Father, Daddy, Father, God. So, Heavenly Father, we want to draw near to you and help us to know that we're accepted and we're welcomed because of all that Jesus has done for us. We ask it in his precious name. Amen.